not true. It's actually quite easy to breathe in these helmets. Uh, more hot than airflow constricting. <sighs> Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. As I mentioned in my welcome back video, I wanted to include on this channel what has become a big part of my life and it's really a spin-off of being a lifelong anime fan and that is that I have become a kendo player. And my journey into kendo was probably not typical. For one, I started late at about 30 years of age, whereas in Japan, where this sport is from, uh, kids as young as, you know, six or even younger will start doing kendo and grow up with it. We actually have a member in our club who has been doing it for 10 years and is only 18 years old. And boy, does he kick our asses. Not only did I come to the sport late, I came into it in a very interesting way. And for this video, I am going to take you on a bit of the journey that I have gone through, getting into what has become one of the favorite parts of my life. So this is where my kendo journey began. And in case you can't tell, this is a public park. Now, this is not normally how you start kendo, but necessity is the mother of invention. And this was in the height of COVID. So all recreational, you know, fitness facilities were shut down, including martial arts. And my club, the Niagara Kendo Club, also had a problem where their former space had been vandalized and a lot of gear had been stolen, which was terrible. But because it's a real sport for diehards, we knew we wanted to get started again. And I had been asking about getting started. And when the opportunity came, my sensei said, hey, we're gonna start practicing in this public park. It's not how you're supposed to do it, but we're gonna do it anyway. So there we were. About four diehard kendo people, four new people. Sadly, I'm the only one who remains because I don't know, I'm a diehard and also kind of having no life allows for a hobby like this. But there we were learning the basics of kendo, swinging wooden swords in a public park. Did we get some interesting looks? Absolutely. Here's the real problem with practicing kendo outdoors. Kendo is a sport that is meant to be done on hardwood because you do a lot of sliding foot motions. Uh, so there we were on grass, uneven grass, often full of sticks, trying to learn how to slide our feet while swinging swords. Uh, very interesting to try to do, not a lot of success, but kind of a good way to see if you were really into doing this. And the real fun of being out here was the fact that we said we would practice from seven to nine, but really that turned into seven until we can't stand being eaten alive by mosquitoes anymore. This was in the height of summer. And kind of right over there behind me was the first time I ever saw kendo sparring in real life, which was very interesting and a moment that could make or break you when you saw two people in full armor screaming at the top of their lungs looking like they're trying to kill each other with sticks. That either will excite you or horrify you. I chose the former. Now, after a summer of training out here, the opportunity finally arose for us to move into an indoor space with proper flooring. Sadly, we couldn't go back to the original martial arts center uh, because again, gear being stolen and also they weren't allowed to open yet. But we did find an opportunity at a local church just down the street where I'm gonna take you now. So behind me is St. John's Anglican in Thorold, and this became our new dojo after months in the heat and the improper footing. This is actually an amazing place for kendo, um, particularly because of the floor. So uh, can't go in because we only rent that place two nights a week and I don't want to be bothering anybody. But you'll see right behind me, that window is the big meeting hall. And it has this beautiful hardwood floor and super high ceilings. That is the perfect environment for kendo. And so I was finally able to 
start learning my proper techniques because all of the kendo footwork is a push with the left foot, a slide with the right, and then a stomp. And doing that on concrete, not a good idea. Doing that on linoleum, not a good idea. Has to be hardwood, otherwise you're gonna be killing your feet. Ideally, some people do do it on concrete. Uh, we call those people crazy or devoted. We actually recently got in contact with a dojo in Puerto Rico that does exactly that, and they're gonna be a lot tougher players than us because of it. The only fun concern we have here is uh, there's a bunch of hanging chandeliers, and of course, the only person to ever hit one is yours truly. It did not break, but if you know anything about me, that is so me that I'd be the one to have the accident. And so this is basically my kendo home and I really like it here. The people at the church have been wonderful to us and they love us because of uh, the COVID protocols. We actually brought in our own cleaning solution and clean it twice a session. So they love us for that and uh, we love them because they've been so great and understanding to us. Uh, the hilarious thing is like music lessons and Girl Scout meetings happen below us while we were doing training. So I can only imagine what it's like to just hear sticks clashing and people screaming while they are trying to do activities. So this has been a really like fun part of my life. It is like the coolest hobby I could have ever picked up. I really wish I would have started doing it sooner. Um, but I also think at the same time, I was probably too immature to really stick with martial arts. But I'm glad to be here now. I'm working hard at it. I'm hoping to go up two ranks this year. But I think I'm gonna cover more of that in a different video. And uh, I've really like found a wonderful club and kind of a kind of a kendo family. It's really a, a, a community of a sport. Um, and the great thing about it is you can kind of go to any dojo and you are welcome. You might have to learn the idiosyncrasies of each dojo, but you are always welcome as a kendo player or as we say a kendoka. Now of course after you do uh, a bunch of you know sweaty vigorous athletic stuff uh, particularly with lots of screaming it is time to go and relax get food possibly libations if you are of age and uh, we're gonna go to the place where we do that. Yeah, hope you enjoyed uh, getting to uh, know me and my uh, journey with Kendo. It is, again, has become a really big part of my life and I just enjoy it more and more as time goes on. And it's a sport with a ton of longevity that I will be able to play for the rest of my life. Some of my senior sensei are in their 70s and still kicking ass. So that is something to look forward to. Old man Kendo, as we like to call it. It's good stuff. And so if you are interested in this sport, um, well, one, continue to follow the channel because I will be talking about it as my journey continues. I'm still very fresh, so I'm sure I will have lots to talk about as I continue with it. If you are interested in kendo, please go looking for a local club. You're going to have, you know, clusters of them where you have more people. Uh, in our case here in Southern Ontario, they are of course concentrated in Toronto and around, but we still managed to make a club this far south where I live. And in fact, it's a real global community sport. Uh, we are in contact with a dojo in Puerto Rico and uh, we have open invitations to go visit in places in Europe. It really is a global community and everybody who dons the armor are friends. So if you have any questions for me about Kendo, my particular experience, that of a bit of a rank amateur, happy to talk to you about it. Or if not, this is the internet and you can always find information. So thanks for stopping by and uh, look forward to more content uh, about my life as an otaku. Easy come, easy go.